According to legend, a Chinese Mandarin once gave British Prime Minister Charles Gray what gift? Get ready for some fancy international flavor straight from the upcoming Geeks Who Drink book, Duh, on this week's Random Knowledge. I'm Geeks Who Drink Chief Editor Christopher Short. Every year we write 22,000 quiz questions, 20 words each. Some of those stories deserve more time, so we made a video series. We're Geeks Who Drink and we read the politics. This is random knowledge. According to legend, that gift from the Chinese Mandarin to Earl Grey was tea. Duh. After the Earl of Sandwich, Grey is probably the second best known English Earl in America. And pretty much all us Yanks know about either one is what he reputedly liked to put into his biscuit hole. Note to self. Biscuit Hole would be an amazing band name. Born in 1764, the second Earl Grey, the first being his dad, Charles Sr., was a lifelong liberal Whig politician, elected to Parliament at age 22. He spent the next 30 years becoming a party leader, ultimately getting elevated to Prime Minister in 1830. And in less than four years at Downing Street, he got some important shit done. He made things fractionally better for still prevalent child workers and he fulfilled a long-time goal with the passage of the Slavery Abolition Act. They didn't get out of Africa altogether until 1980, but hey, whatever. Of course, all that got overshadowed by tea, which we're not even really sure he himself popularized. One common origin story suggests that his wife, Mary Elizabeth, dug a random gift of tea infused with bergamot oil. Dug it so much, in fact, that it became her go-to beverage for entertaining, and soon it was the talk of the lifted pinky classes. Adelia, we wish to celebrate the Slavery Abolition Act. Fetch us more tea or I'll beat you. If that story doesn't do it for you, here are some other oft-repeated tales. Like I said before, it was a gift from a Chinese Mandarin. He put some bergamot in there because all the cool kids were experimenting with flavored teas at the time. This bitter orange is far out, man. Or, like I said before, it was a gift from a Chinese Mandarin, but he'd stowed the tea and the bergamot next to each other in the ship's hold. So that citrusy flavor is just a happy accident. Or, all oh, that's a bunch of crap. It was created by a completely unrelated mid-19th century tea merchant named William Gray. He used the Earl's title purely for the marketing value. It's aristocratically delicious! Mind you, actual fact-finding won't help you sort any of this out. The Oxford English Dictionary blog crowdsourced some research a few years back, finding the earliest reference to Earl Grey's blend in 1884, nearly 40 years after Charles's death. That said, the idea of using bergamot dates to at least 1824, smack in the middle of his legislative career. That said, the bergamot oil was originally used to enhance substandard tea leaves. Hardly a practice likely to be championed by a nobleman. It's quite the roller coaster of, um, tea history. God, what a rush! Wherever it came from, it clearly has a long and savory history, and an even longer future. If you believe Star Trek, we'll still be drinking it hot until at least the 24th century. Make it so. If random knowledge is your cup of tea, there are three things you should do right now. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and oh yeah, this essay came directly from our forthcoming book, Duh! 100 bar trivia questions you should know, and the unexpected stories behind the answers. It's available from bookstores on September 3rd, but if you pre-order it right now from geekswhodrink.com slash book promo, we'll send you a free exclusive bonus essay right away. That means you'll be 1% smarter than everyone else who buys the book. <laughs> One way or another, please do come back next week for more random knowledge. Yo, I'll beat you!